Hey friends, this is Lindsay with a heart for all students and the answer a question that I asked was asked in my private Facebook group. This mom was very, very concerned because her child is an older child, uh, middle school, um, but he has a slower processing speed. So when I talk about slower processing speed, I'm talking about the kid that takes forever to do 10 math problems and they know how to do them, but it takes them forever. It's that child who you might ask them a question and it takes a long time for them to answer. This does not mean that they are less than. In fact, they're probably gifted in some other area of the brain and some other area that is going to take them so, so far in this world. Even if your child doesn't have a slower processing speed, this general principle that I'm about to share with you right now applies. Her problem is, mom says, is if he does all the math problems, then he is going to be spending his entire day doing schoolwork and there is no time for family time and for relationship building and for him to pursue other things that are important and that are part of who he is. So her question was really about how long is too long, how long is appropriate, and how much repetition do we need in order for a child to receive and process information and be able to retrieve it later to be used, okay? Let me repeat that. That's the goal of education, of learning anything. The goal is for our children to be able to receive process the information, take it from short-term memory into long-term memory, and then be able to eventually retrieve it again and be able to apply it wherever it needs to be applied. That's the goal. The goal of true education is not accomplish 50 math problems. Now, if the goal is how many math problems can you do in, you know, five minutes, fine. The goal is learn the concept, learn the skill, have it go from short-term working memory to long-term memory and be able to retrieve it and process it and use it in the way that it needs to be applied next. That's the goal of any sort of education. So her child has slower processing speed. My perspective, my principle will always be the same. Small chunks of intentional teaching done well without stress over time will yield the fruit that we want it to yield. If we put a piece of paper in front of a child and say, you have to finish all 50 problems, 20 problems, 10 problems, I don't care if it's five problems. If the child is so overwhelmed because the concept is new and they're learning it, and so they just automatically shut down, they're not willfully shutting down. You choose to give him that which he is emotionally and mentally able to process, receive, and then later retrieve. So I would much rather a child spend 10 minutes working on five math problems that are more challenging, that he is just learning, do them well, do them correctly without stress for 10 minutes in the morning, and then tomorrow do the same thing, or before dinner for five minutes do one more math problem. Same concept, one more math problem, and do them well, because then your child will actually receive, be able to process the information. The part of the brain that is able to receive and process information is available when we take away the barriers of, you will have to sit here for the next five hours because that's what everybody says you're supposed to be able to do. Even though he's not able to do that well, we want to serve our children well. We need to teach the children based on their capacity, based on who they are, not who the world tells them they're supposed to be. So small chunks over time. I remember just to give you a quick example, when my second daughter, and I did this with my older one as well, when my second daughter was learning three digit by two digit multiplication, it was the funniest thing. She could do two digit, two digit by two digit, no problem. But as soon as that third digit entered in the picture, whether it was psychological or whatever, it was super overwhelming to her. There was just something about those extra steps that was super overwhelming to her. So I realized I could sit there and be like, you know what you're doing, you did it well yesterday. Well, it's okay if they learned it yesterday, but if they're anxious and overwhelmed, they can't retrieve that information. It's not a choice, they can't retrieve it. So what I did is I was like, okay, my goal, what's my goal? My goal is for her to learn the concept, use the skills to get the correct answer, and be able to do it again. That's my goal. So what did I do? For quite some time, we would just say, for the next 10 minutes, we're gonna do this. We're probably gonna work on about two problems, maybe three. We're gonna work on three problems. 
very intentionally, very deliberately, without stress. And we would do that for like a week on this one concept. No problems. She was like, <sighs> she was able to understand it. She's able to get at it. Now she can do many, many more problems than just two at a time. But if we do that fire hose approach to education on children, we teach our kids the wrong message. We teach our kids when they can't keep up, when they start melting down because they're so overwhelmed, fight or flight kicks in, they have no control over that. And then they hear, I'm so stupid. Why can't I do this like this person? I'm trying so hard. I want to. Our kids want to please us. If our children didn't have to take five hours to do 20 math problems, they wouldn't. They want to go play with their friends or they want to go spend time with you and have fun. They don't want to disappoint us. So all that to say, small chunks over time yield fruit.